Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Jen, GR Mom, joined as always by GR Dad. Hi. How's it going, GR Dad? Pretty good. Excellent. Excellent. The cocktail of the week this week is the Lion's Tail. I was calling it the Lion's Mane, but it is the Lion's Tail. Somebody probably has come up with a variation that they call the Lion's Mane. I thought you varied it a little bit. Well, I did for you. I shared this recipe with uh, Cheddar's Fam because they had a bottle of allspice dram. And I was like, ooh, you can make a lion's tail with that. And uh, and then you're like, I want one, but we don't have any allspice dram. So I used pimento bitters, which are like in the same direction, but you can't use as much of them. And then a little bit of simple syrup. So maybe you just made a lion's mane and you don't even know it. No, oh, well, why don't we call it that? That'd be What's great. What's allspice dram? Is it a bitter or is it a drink drink? It's a liqueur. I think it's rum based. Um but it's really herbally flavor. Uh, it sounds Christmasy. Spiced, caribbean spiced. Oh, caribbean spiced. Yeah, let's see. I mean, I, I just recently learned that allspice is not all spices. I, I believe we actually have a podcast episode called that. I know. Uh, if you wanted to make a time to realize. allspice dram at home, you would use rum, allspice berries, cinnamon stick, water, and brown sugar. Allspice is a single berry? Mm-hmm. What a strange name to call something. <laughs> Anyway, go ahead. Go on. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. The etymology of allspice, Old English, every, hang on. <laughs> Old English, <laughs> eall, E-A-L-L, means every entire or the whole quantity of. So oh, like y'all. All. What's up, y'all? <laughs> y'all spice? <laughs> I see where it comes from now. It's from y'all. <laughs> Uh, spice, it's uh, all spices made from the berry of the Jamaican pimento, which is why pimento bitters are a good substitute. Like so pimento and olives, the little red things? Mm -mm. Oh. Those are pepper, pimento peppers. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Why do people not keep their words uh, You straight? know what? Maybe they do come from the same plant. I shouldn't be saying that. Maybe pimento peppers make pimento berries or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, the berry of the Jamaican pimento... It is so-called allspice because it is supposed to combine the flavor of cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves. Okay. So, so it's kind of like a they combo. And they're like, it was like, like all the spices. Because <laughs> like all, all we know is cinnamon, nutmeg, and fucking they cloves. They really just didn't edit these names very carefully yeah. at the time. But fair enough. Fair enough. That's at least a, a good origin story. I so like it's, it. it's kind of Caribbean-y flavored. Yeah. And um, so anyway, to make a lion's tail is two ounces of bourbon, half an ounce of allspice dram, half an ounce of lime juice, and like maybe simple syrup if you want couple dashes of angostura bitters shake it up serve it in a coop it's it was, tasty it was good yeah yeah i think you used the uranium coop uranium glass uranium glass yes it glowed in the dark in the black light yeah luckily not in the dark that's true <laughs> you didn't use I mean, the black when light. i put my lead pants on to drink it it was fine <laughs> okay um it's time for administrative corner Ooh, i like i mean i really i mean i love administrative corner <laughs> good um so administrative corner as you know has included fish scandal updates and i am now expanding fish scandals to include um all scandals at bass pro shop aquariums and maybe all all aquarium scandals in general. <laughs> I'm not sure because we've only had a Bass Pro Shop what, aquarium scandals. Even if it's scandals? like sea mammals, is that what you're saying? Or if they're, they all involve fish, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fair. I'm just saying that like, uh, well, uh, you're going to see that today's Bass Pro Shop aquarium scandal does not involve fish, except that there were fish in the aquarium, but they're adjacent to the scandal. Unlike Good. the guy who took the fish out. Good enough. It, it, it's fish or fish adjacent. And Bass has Bass in the name, so Bass I think it, shops, yeah. everything at Bass Pro Shops is fair game. Okay, I think that's good. Yeah. Okay, man strips naked, jumps into Bass Pro <laughs> Shops, leads aquarium, and knocks himself unconscious. <laughs> we should feel bad for this guy because he clearly was having like a oh, a psychological incident I at the time. Don't think he could have been drunk in this. No, no, no. He he definitely was mentally ill. Oh. Um, but the story is still a little cray, so we're gonna tell the story. Yep, yeah, please. Okay. Go. A man is in custody and en route to a hospital for mental health treatment after he jumped naked into the massive aquarium at the Bass Pro Shop Leeds on Thursday night. Chief Paul Irwin said the incident happened about near closing time. The 42-year-old man was reported to be driving erratically and drove his vehicle into a pole in the store parking lot. He did this on purpose. I've read many articles about this. He intentionally crashed his car into a pole. He Why, to anchor it better? I, I, we've not been told why. Hmm. He got out 
uh, an interesting thing. I'm taking this EMT class. And uh, yes, by the way, Jen's taking an EMT class. But the end of the month, so I should she be can, an EMT. She can shock you back into life. But you she could, maybe she can shock me back out of life. Maybe this is the plan. I I am only. She's qual- been asking about my life insurance <laughs> policy a lot <laughs> lately. True, I don't I understand. Did. Uh, I'm only qualified to use an AED, which will only shock you if you deserve a shock. <laughs> 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 and you don't need to be an EMT to oh, do that. Who you decides that? You? <laughs> a, literally, like a. Li- you don't need any certification. You just take it off the wall. <laughs> Put the little pasties I on something. I deserve a shock. This is not a good the thing AED for you to be decides. deciding. The, the AED, AED decides. The AED. What? No, like some magical AED circuit. <laughs> <laughs> we typically call that science instead of magic, but I'm sure. I'm sure I'll wake up with a startle at some point soon when you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> they uh they say you know when you're we talked a lot about aeds because they if somebody's in ventricular fibrillation the ad will shock them back and they're like uh you got to make sure that like you know if you have them on metal that nobody else is touching the metal and the guy like leading the class he's like we went shocked somebody at a high school football game and they were on the bleachers and we thought everybody was off but way down at the other end of the bleachers there were people sitting some couple was canoodling probably they got, they got zapped when they shocked the guy <laughs> they're like oh what a romantic kiss <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> electrifying <laughs> it's a wow. real intense shock so i'm getting rubber pajamas this is ridiculous <laughs> anyway they tell you that when you're um you know showing up on a scene and collecting a patient uh they they have all these questions that are just like it doesn't matter why like, <laughs> if somebody tries to commit suicide are you gonna ask them why no like that's not your job your job is to get them to the hospital no. why'd you crash a car into pole you don't ask him that but you said there is information indicating that he did it on purpose he may have volunteered this information we do not have any information on why we just have he did it on purpose uh okay he uh, he did the crash. He got out of the vehicle. He took off his clothes and he ran into the Bass Pro Shop. Aww. And then he jumped into the aquarium. He it says video taken by bystanders showed the man do a cannonball into the aquarium cannonball. and later stand under the waterfall, which sounds pretty fun to be honest. <laughs> so there's stairs to go up to the top of this aquarium. So the police went up there. Um, Where was this geographically? Um, you said Leeds, Alabama. Oh, okay. Leeds, Alabama. Um, the officers went up, walked up the stairs. He got out of the water and then he apparently was like super belligerent to the cops, yelled at them and then dove back into the aquarium. <laughs> and then from inside the water, he was yelling at them. Then he didn't want to get out. Yeah. Come the get me coppers. Where he went in. So he just decided to climb over the side uh, of yeah, the aquarium. Yeah. And then he fell onto the ground and hit his head and knocked himself out. Oof. So then he was compliant. And so they took him to the hospital. <laughs> He, no, uh, they handcuffed him. Then he woke up and then he tried to fight them. Um, uh, so they put a blanket on so him. So it was a good idea not to hang, a good idea to handcuff him. Yes. Yes. Yes, for sure. This uh, is a real, I have really mixed reactions. I feel bad for the guy. Yeah. It's also not a hundred degrees outside. If it were a hundred degrees outside, I would more understand the <laughs> desire to have a cold dip and a shower under the waterfall. Then, then, you know, I could get some heat crazy. I could get heat crazy perhaps. Um, but. But it's not hot. I mean, I'm sure it was in the 70s or whatever, or colder. Well, they took him to the hospital first. He got an evaluation, but apparently they didn't keep him because then he was taken to jail. And he certainly got some charges, even if he was having a mental health incident. He is charged with public lewdness, disorderly conduct, resisting arrest, assault on a police officer, two counts of first-degree criminal mischief, and two counts of reckless endangerment. And smashing his car into a pole. I'm sure they'll try to get get him to pay for their poll so anyway in bass pro shop scandal news there is our latest that's pretty good i mean look i i prefer this behavior to weights in fish and the general dishonesty that's going on at these tournaments quite for pete's sake okay um so there you go that is administrative corner do you have anything you'd like to add before we get to dog updates um no (laughs) okay no it's time for dog updates. But I thought about it. <laughs> um, Vink and Remy had a joint visit to the oncologist today. They did. They went together. And you drove them? I let Vink drive a little bit. Oh, how'd it she was, do? You know, it was stop and go. She was okay. Good she can't job, reach Vink. the pedals, but I did that. Vink, good job, Vink. She, we almost ended up in the ocean, but it was fine. Good. Um, yeah, so Remy is, you know, has lymphoma, but he has indolent lymphoma. So he just gets a check every couple months and they're like, yep, he's doing good. And that seems like that was how it went today. And my logistical coup was rescheduling Remy's to coincide with Vink's so I wouldn't have to drive up twice in five days. In this case, it was just one drive. Indeed. It was a bit 
bad. It was a long drive. It's a long drive. Nobody enjoyed it. Neither Venk nor Remy are super psyched to be in the car. They're no, they're no guac. No, that's true. I went to Miami on Wednesday. and uh, Because Venk has weekly trips now, yeah. Yeah, but I didn't take Venk. No, you just went. I mean, that was also a miss. I couldn't have brought Vink. I I was like this was for the EMT thing. I had to get my CPR certification, and uh, you had I, to squeeze a dummy. <laughs> I had to like do the actual physical test, and uh, <laughs> I I would have had to have like left Vink in the car in a garage in Miami. Like here we can leave him in the car when we go to the grocery store because nothing happens in the keys. But I would have been really uncomfortable. No, that can't. You wouldn't. You wouldn't uh, have been able to do it. I I had a pretty enjoyable drive actually. Because you didn't have me. <laughs> no, <laughs> you didn't have me in the car today. Squeeze a dummy, is it? <laughs> <laughs> the dummy has a little light to let you know if you're squeezing I it the right way. I didn't have you in way. the car, and it was the worst drive I've ever taken home <laughs> my whole entire life. <laughs> what did we do afterwards? We drove into town to get groceries together. Yeah, I was like, I'm going to go get groceries. And Ingo's like, I'm coming. And I was like, you really don't have to come. Well, I like you could driving just with stay you. here. I was like, no, I'm coming. Yeah. And then we just drove to get groceries. Well, my drive was perfectly enjoyable. Blech. So I, was, the good, that's good blech. because I have to take Vink up the next two weeks. Yeah. So it's good that you have a good impression. Yep. Um, Vink was not, uh, did not have as good a report as Remy. Her lymph nodes are bigger, which is not supposed to be happening because the cancer is supposed to be gone and we're just supposed to be keeping it from coming back. But it's there because the lymph nodes are bigger. So the young, you were there, but from your report, it sounds like the oncologist says like maybe the medicine last week, which was medicine number three. I mean, it was medicine number one, but it was her third dose of medicine. It, we alternate every week. Cycle so it's one, two, one, three. Yeah. Medicine one, medicine two, medicine one again, and then medicine three. So last week she got medicine one for the second time. And the oncologist thinks she maybe didn't respond to it as well as she should have. But her blood work was good. So she still got medicine three today. This completes her first cycle. We have three more cycles. Yeah. she And I think she got a little less medicine just because before that her white blood cells had crashed. I right? think, so I think she was dosing more carefully. Or was that the next no, dose No, the next medicine? time she gets medicine too, she's going to get a lower dose. Okay. That's not great. But her white blood had crashed, so who knows. Yeah. Um, Bank. She seems okay physically she seems okay she uh definitely does not want to be fucked with by feta though no. and feta was trying to play with her was that two nights ago and Vic gave her a aggressive correction you said there was an angry face i didn't see it but you said there was angry face you know some sometimes they'll just do a straight up like snap but she did the kind of like really fast moving like <laughs> like jump 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 face feta noticed oh feta freaked the fuck out and then stayed away from Vink for a while so we're doing our best to keep them apart. And then she went and messed with Guac, whom she could now mess with. Yep, they're good pals. Guac, you do a good job. You're being very, very patient. Everyone is being excessively patient with this little nuisance. Yes, she's a little monster. She's a little monster. Um, that's kind of it for dog updates. Um, bro, oh, yes, Brody went into the vet this week. Um, he's got these calluses on his back paws, kind of like on the inside, like if he had a back thumb where the thumb would be sort of um yeah because he kind of drags his feet a bit and he his he doesn't have great control over his back leg so he'll sometimes push off on the inside legs so he has these two black spots one on each foot um and i don't know yes two days ago yesterday morning whenever it was he was like one of them was like much bigger than it had been and it was, it was bleeding kudos to you for noticing because it is kind of hard to see it was kind of squishy right yeah yeah and because I was trimming his toes and I was like, oh, no, look at that. And I was like, you know, he had melanoma, which is black. Yeah, and they normally just get it in like their face, right? Their gums and their nose and stuff. But I'm like, this is also black. It was black before, but now it's like bigger, which is not good. And it feels weird. So we took him in after hours. Like you took him in the emergency room. Yeah. Yeah. In the middle of the night. You had to wait for a while. It was like a whole. But it was an empty practice. Yeah. Um, there was a poodle there. That we chatted with oh, that's nice. in the waiting room. You got to hold that mic to your Oh, mouth. that's nice. <laughs> didn't, didn't think that was worth my mic. Um, but yeah, so it seems like it's just infected. Um, the vet who was there was like, you know, the only way to really know is to do a biopsy. And 
um, you know, we'd have to take a chunk of it out. And, you know, then like your option would be surgery to try to remove it all. And I was like, well, he had a terrible time under anesthesia last time. And every time we do surgery on him and it doesn't heal and he's 13. So like, I don't think we're going to do a biopsy because like, what are we going to do? We can't do the surgery. Like, can you imagine trying to keep if they took a big piece of skin out of his paw, trying to keep that incision closed, like we can't keep any incision closed on that dog. And, and one of his big joys is going in the water. Yeah. You know, we'd, oh, it'd be terrible. I mean, I worry less about that because I can manage that for eight weeks. No, but I just like, mean it, it, he doesn't, he wouldn't have a good eight weeks. It'd be terrible. That's true. For I mean, him. I would trade eight weeks for being fixed, but... Um, I'm not confident that he would heal up at all from that, given that it has been months and months of like just trying to get stuff to heal and having to like re go back into surgery. And no, I remember his really ear bad. was like even even when when his ear was being the ear, the connected. elbow, yeah, the mouth, like every surgery he's had. The mouth took a long time. We've yeah. had to have a second reclosing of the incision, and it still hasn't worked great, and it's gotten reinfected, yeah. and so. It, this seems like it's just an infection anyway so now he's on antibiotics and he'll be fine um guac is good feta is little monster <laughs> she's good was there an escape last week was that on was that last week i don't know there's so many they're not worth reporting at this point yeah they didn't make it into the pool did they they did not go in the pool okay no. you, yeah. you really want to talk about it though i'm just saying they continue to escape even though wayne's not there indeed <laughs> it's not a story it's boring it's boring for you because you know the ending the ending is they always leave and then they come back they didn't go in the pool this time mm -hmm. that's a twist <laughs> okay you didn't expect that okay all right there you go great you got anything else you want to add to dog updates <laughs> no i don't think so okay uh, we're moving on then yeah all right all right taste of the keys is a short one but a good one. Speeding motorist arrested. A 26-year-old Greensboro, Greensboro, North Carolina motorist was arrested Wednesday for fleeing from the sheriff's office on US-1. Bad idea. Venkata, we're just going to go with Venkata. Venkata has got a long name. Was charged with fleeing and eluding. The sheriff's office observed a Chevrolet traveling 78 miles per hour in a 35 mile power per hour zone Oof. near mile marker 29.5 at approximately 8.25 p.m. This is like the only 35 mile an hour zone. At night. Uh, yeah, that's right. Big pine at night. The deer. That's where the little key deer walk around. Like they literally walk across the road. They're just like next to the road. There's like a thousand of them left in the whole entire world. They're super endangered. And the speed limit is 35 at He's night. 78. He's going oh, 78 man. just flying through there. At 8.30 p.m., like, there's a lot of people around Pe on Big People Pine. go 35. I mean, like, Absolutely maybe 37. People are, because it is very well patrolled, but people definitely slow down. He must have just zipped by people, too. And there are deer out all over the place, yeah. and nobody wants to hit a deer. And if you hit it, it's a $10,000 fine for hitting a deer. Oof. So deterrent works. Everybody goes 35. The suspect did not stop for a sheriff's office patrol vehicle that had its lights and siren activated. He then turned down a side street. That was doomed to fail. Dude, where are you going to go? There's just one road. The vehicle was quickly found, parked on West Cat Hill Court on Big Pine Key. He was taken to jail. Yeah, I bet he was. Yes, he, he was. He had a no plan. Mm -mm. 78 miles an hour is too fast. Sure is. What's the German word of the week? Um, a word, it's it's after Christmas now, but I've just learned it because I think a, a friend of the squad sent it in. Wichteln. Wichteln. Wichtel. And the Wichtel is a, like a gnome. W-I-C-H-T-L? T-E-L-N. Wichteln. Because you've made the, the noun okay. into a, a verb. Yeah. It means a uh, secret Santa. Like to give. Oh. Because like the gnomes give out presents or it, i mean maybe elves maybe it's an elf i think it's more gnomey though oh. or you call it schrottwichteln which is garbage wichteln <laughs> which is like you know giving away your old stuff i yeah. guess uh guac just went into the 
office and got a blow high. So Glock's blow highs were in pretty bad shape. He takes them outside and for and leaves them out there. He Sometimes does not, he pees on them. He does not take good care of them. He does not. He and he lets little the little monster, monster take drag it around. Yeah, and and gut it. They and I've repaired them many times, yeah. and uh, and they had holes and they were filthy and they were just falling apart. And so I bought him five new blow highs today from IKEA and they were all delivered. And so there's like three blow highs on top of Feta's crate right now. And Guac just went in and like stuck his head up there and pulled one down. And now he's got it in front of the TV. Yeah, all snugged up with it. He climbed over another new one to get to that <laughs> one. There's five in play right now, and he's he's picking different ones at different times, which is kind of nice. Well, good job, Guac. I mean. He's a good boy. Yeah. Um, before we move on to Ingo Corner, or maybe to lead us into Ingo Corner. Yes. Um, tomorrow. I never know what's going to happen next in this <laughs> podcast. Go ahead. <laughs> tomorrow, in addition to being the three-year anniversary of the insurrection, is also Dear Dad's birthday. You can't tell people these secrets. Plus, it's, it's not my fault those idiots decided to riot on the sixth. No, no. I don't blame you for it. I think it's too bad that your birthday has been slightly corrupted by an insurrection. No, I think more importantly, this is when the three kings delivered their little gifts to baby Jesus. Mm. The frankincense, gold, which I get, and myrrh, Mm -hmm. which I don't get. Mm. (laughs) How much myrrh does a baby need? There's also that little drummer boy. You know, I'm not sure... (laughs) He was there on the 6th. I think he was drumming for a while. I hate that kid. <laughs> God, that is like my least favorite Christmas song. <laughs> I hate it so much. So you're so, you know, yeah, sentimental. Anyway, you're very sentimental. Everybody wish Ingo a birthday. Happy birthday on the 6th. But not before, because in Germany, that's bad luck to give some, to wish someone a happy birthday in advance. But it's not done. Mm. Well, it's already your birthday in Germany. so Fair enough. I think it, that we're in the green you're zone now. Clear. Yeah, I feel like I'm... I'm not due for any bad luck for this one. Uh, okay, it's time for Ingo Corner where you say whatever you want and I won't tell you that it's boring. I have thoughts. What One, <laughs> as, Excellent. as before during this holiday season, I want to thank everyone who sent us cards. Yeah. The UPS box was overflowing again. Yes. They offered us a bigger box again <laughs> <laughs> for more money. We're, usually we're fine. We're like, suck uh, it up, guys. It was like 38 cards this time it's really fun having a big wad of cards and it makes me feel very special reading them all so it's uh, thank you thank you to everyone uh it's definitely appreciated my other thought totally changing the subject yeah is having been in the oncologist's vet office a few times yeah for the last several years uh, many times uh made me think of like designing a vet office waiting room Mm. because that one's terrible they have like a very narrow space Mm -hmm. long narrow space where there's probably they probably have about eight chairs and there's no dividers and there's no space and if there's you know a dog you you can't really put a dog in each chair because they'll start fighting each other or playing with each other or barking with each other like remy's kind of sensitive yeah um so it's a bad design the one here cruise uh animal hospital has like little booths yeah which is really good the osm has booths too booths are really important in a vet's office I think like so, you can't I agree. just you can't just make everyone sit together it's it's dumb yeah i mean it's it was and it's very unpleasant so i agree vets offices should consider how to design the waiting rooms it's different than for humans i'd like a booth at a regular doctor's office too yeah but you can sit next to another human if you put like a you know, All a pug right, next to em. a husky next to an old blind <laughs> Remy, you could get fights. Yeah. Yeah. It's very stressful. I, I sometimes think about fighting people at the doctor's office. Fair enough. Fair enough. Not anymore. Yeah. We got a good doctor now. There's never yeah. anybody I'm else not sure waiting. sure booths help that either, though. <laughs> <laughs> then I wouldn't have to see their stupid <laughs> face. Sit there thinking about it anyway. <laughs> uh, that's it. Uh, yeah. But most, most, more importantly, thanks to everyone. Well, that's lovely. Yeah. All right, everybody, thanks for listening. And until next time, Slava Ukraini, and don't put anyone unless they ask you to. That's right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>